Lion's mane mushrooms are delicious to eat, powerfully medicinal, and also happen to be one of the easier mushrooms to grow. In this video, I'm going to share the entire process of growing these amazing mushrooms and explain everything you need to know to go from a syringe of liquid culture to fully grown lion's mane mushrooms. With just a few basic pieces of equipment, you can do this yourself at home and grow all the lion's mane you could want. The liquid culture we'll be starting from is just lion's mane mycelium, the fungal network that eventually gives rise to mushrooms, suspended in a sugar water solution. The mycelium in liquid culture is very delicate and must be built up in stages until it's ready to produce mushrooms. The three stages we'll have to traverse are grain spawn, fruiting blocks, and fruiting. I'll explain each of these stages in this video, and links to everything you need will be down in the description. Before we get into making our grain spawn, we need to address one of the biggest challenges of growing mushrooms, maintaining sterility. Everything we're growing our mycelium on has to be free of microorganisms that could outcompete it and cause contamination. To prevent this, we'll use a pressure cooker to steam sterilize whatever we're growing on. We also need to make sure that no contamination gets in when we're adding our mycelium to our sterile growing medium. For this, you'll want to make a still air box, which can be done by simply cutting or melting two armholes in a large plastic tote. You can then do all your sterile work inside this box, which creates a space where the air isn't moving and contaminants are less likely to drift into your growing medium. Once you have your pressure cooker and still air box, it's time to make some grain spawn. Grain spawn is just what it sounds like, some sort of nutritious grain like rye, oats, or millet, which you grow your mycelium on until it's strong enough to spawn to your larger fruiting blocks. These are all the materials you'll need for this step, which are also linked in the description. Since we'll be growing our grain spawn in mason jars, we need to start by modifying our jar lids to allow for the gas exchange that the mycelium needs. I like to get plastic lids for my jars since they don't rust, then simply drill a quarter inch hole in each, and place a synthetic filter disc under the lid to filter the air passing through the hole. If you want to use the metal lids that come with the jars, you can also just punch the hole with a hole puncher and place your filter disc between the lid and the fastening ring. With the lids made, we can weigh out our grains in our large pot. I'm using rye here, and I'll weigh out a half pound of dry rye berries for each jar that I want to make. Next, we need to hydrate these grains to the moisture level that mycelium likes. So fill your pot up with water and bring it to a boil on a stove top for about 20 minutes to half an hour. Then you can strain out the water and spread the grains out on a towel to dry for about an hour. After this time, the grains should be perfectly hydrated and ready to load into our mason jars. Fill each jar up about two-thirds of the way, and then add on your modified lids. Now we're ready to pressure sterilize these grain jars, so loosen the lids a quarter turn to allow steam to escape in the pressure cooker, and then cover them in aluminum foil to prevent water from getting in. Then you can load the jars into your pressure cooker, and pressure cook them at 15 psi for an hour and a half. Make sure to follow the recommended steps for your pressure cooker, which usually includes a venting period, and don't start your timer until you reach the 15 psi. When the hour and a half is up, take the cooker off the heat and leave it to cool completely. The next step is to inoculate the grain, so let's set up our still air box. Spray it down with 70% isopropyl alcohol, and then leave it to disinfect for 10 minutes. Then place the totes lid on a table, add a towel soaked in diluted bleach on top of it, which will trap and kill any contaminants that land on it, wipe down the box, and add it on top. You can then bring your pressure cooker containing your sterilized grain jars to your work area and unload them directly into your still air box. Then wipe down your syringe of liquid culture with ISO and add it to the box as well. Leave your box with everything in it for about 10 minutes to let the air settle before proceeding. To inoculate your jars, simply spray down your gloved hands with ISO, put your arms through the holes in your still air box, and then unscrew the lids and add 2 milliliters of liquid culture to each jar before replacing the lids. I like to do a max of two jars at a time to avoid crowding my still air box. If you're doing more than two, change the syringe needle or hold a lighter to it until it's red hot in between each round. The inoculated jars should then be placed somewhere dark, ideally between 70 and 80 degrees Fahrenheit, to incubate. When the mycelium has colonized about a third of the grain, one to two weeks after inoculation, you can shake the jars to redistribute the mycelium and accelerate the colonization. Another one to two weeks later, your jars should be completely colonized and ready to go. And now it's time to prepare our fruiting blocks. These are the materials we'll be using for this, which are also listed down below. Mix together 1.8 pounds of hardwood fuel pellets, 0.2 pounds of wheat bran, and three pounds of water, and then add the mixture to your filter patch grow bags. You can also just add everything directly into the bag and mix it up in there. Then fold the bags over like this and pressure cook them at 15 PSI for two and a half hours. Make sure to raise the bags out of the water in your pressure cooker. I use half pint mason jars to elevate my base plate. I also recommend putting a plate on top of your bags to prevent them from inflating during cooking. 
Once your pressure cooker is fully cool, we'll set up the still air box just as before, bring our pressure cooker over, and then unload the bags directly into the still air box. Then, shake up your colonized grain spawn jar to make it easier to pour, sanitize it with ISO, and then add it to your still air box along with three binder clips, also sanitized with ISO. To inoculate the bags, simply open them up and pour about a quarter of the grain spawn from your jar into each. Put the lid back on your grain spawn jar after pouring, then fold over the top of the bag and secure it with binder clips like this. The bag can then be removed from the still air box and sealed permanently with either an impulse sealer, micropore tape, or even zip ties. The fruiting blocks can then be set aside to incubate for around 3-4 to four weeks until the mycelium is covering the entire thing. At this point, the mycelium is ready to fruit. You can simply cut a slit in the front of each bag to initiate fruiting and watch as your lion's mane mushrooms begin to form. Lion's mane will usually fruit just fine in normal ambient room conditions as long as the air isn't too dry so you can just place your blocks on a shelf somewhere in your house that gets indirect light. If you're growing in normal room conditions like this, miss the area you cut the slit with water at least once a day to make sure that your block doesn't dry out. If you want to take your lion's mane to the next level, you can build a fruiting chamber to raise the humidity. There's a ton of different methods for this, and I don't have time to go over them all in this video, but I recommend looking into shotgun fruiting chambers or martha tents as a first fruiting chamber. The lion's mane is ready to harvest when you see the teeth start to elongate and reach around a quarter inch in length, which happens in around 10 to 15 days. To harvest, simply grab the mushrooms and pull them apart from the fruiting block. And that's all there is to it. You can grow as much lion's mane as you want using this method, which can be cooked into delicious meals or made into medicinal extracts. If you're curious about how to make a basic lion's mane tincture, I've made a video on that which I'll link in the description. This video just scratches the surface of all the different ways that you can cultivate lion's mane and other types of mushrooms. Once you get a handle on the basic techniques I showed here, you can play around with them and find out what works best for you. I can almost guarantee that once you try this, you'll be hooked.